All right, everyone, so we're moving right along to the next demonstration. Uh, hope you found the, the green demo um, helpful in some way. Uh, this scene here is, is going to be kind of a sort of a blend of lessons from the cloud study, but also the green study. Um, there's this really nice, um, colorful uh, sky here as the sun has already set. So the sun is setting over in this direction. And I believe it's already gone down beyond the distant mountains. And so you're just seeing the tops of some of these clouds being hit by that really, really nice warm um, sunlight. You can see that the entire ground plane is pretty much, it is, it's all in shadow. So, you know, and when I squint, there's not a lot of, uh, you know, contrast in value down here. Maybe a difference of a couple value steps. Um, but not significant value contrast, definitely different than say if this was getting hit by direct sunlight from this direction, you'd have a lot more value contrast between the sunlit part of the tree and the shadow side of the tree. There still needs to be some value shift though to give these different bushes and trees and grasses form, but I, you know, probably will want to play down um, value contrast quite a lot in this ground plane. Um, so that it's not very distracting because I think the real beauty is what's happening up here. Compositionally, what's nice about this scene is you have all of these sort of directional lines pulling you into here. It could be an issue if I created an area of interest right here because that's really smack dab in the middle of the composition. But if I create my primary area of interest, say over here, which I think is a, a pretty logical place for it. There's, um, you know, kind of a harder edge here with that tree trunk, a little bit harder edge with that mountain. There's some nice value contrast. There's some nice saturated color right here. So there's, there's a lot of nice stuff happening here. So that's one, uh, I think, obvious area of interest. Um, another one, I think naturally is up here. Just that beautiful sort of pink, creamy, peachy light up here is, is really fantastic. So area of interest, area of interest, and you know, thinking about creating sort of a triangle of areas of interest, there's this one here, one here, you know, a natural area would be down here or maybe over here. I'm not sure, not really sure at this point. I, I at least know that there'll be those two. Um, and that's you know sufficient to for me as kind of a concept to to get going in this piece for the underpainting approach today i'm going to do something a bit different so i'm going to start with let's see here i'm going to start with a pink but i'm not going to block the scene in i'm actually going to use it to get a, a general sense of the, the composition. So almost like a contour line drawing, but I, I really personally don't like going in and drawing hard edges because I think it can be a little bit confining and you feel like you have to stick within those edges. So I'll use this pastel on its, you know, kind of on its side like I would if I was painting with it, but more in a way to sort of get an outline of what these major shapes are in the scene. And then what I'll do is come in with color that I'm seeing, block that in, wet it with alcohol, and then once that is dried, then I'll go in and, and start to um, sort of inch closer to a finish. So this is another of my underpainting approaches. I've shown the monochromatic with the neutral violet. I've shown blocking in with the pink, coming in with color over the top of it, then wetting it with alcohol and it sort of warms everything up. You do get some sort of more neutral colors when you have a cool sitting over that pink, but it will actually warm up those, those cooler neutrals. So those are two different techniques that I've shown. This will be a third technique. So I'm not going to belabor this any further. I'm going to go ahead and, and get started here. So an obvious, I think an obvious starting point is kind of this sort of background rolling hill here and then sort of showing where these trees are and 
And there's this nice darker tree trunk there, there's some other dark tree trunks. And then there's this little really distant hill back here, which I think is really nice. I'll kind of indicate that. There's this angle in the foreground here. So I have this one. So this is this shape. It's kind of another smaller one here. And then a bigger one, which I like how that pops up over this hill, creates a nice overlap effect. And then there's these little ones here, and then there's this one here, which I'll just bring down. Uh, maybe I won't. Looks a little bit looks a little bit awkward when it comes all the ways off. And then, just looking at my shapes, there's this little bit of light there. So this is you know this shadow basically uh, sitting above it. Oops, comes, this tree comes down here. The edge of that tree comes about here. And then for the clouds, and the reason I chose this pink, I'll talk a little bit more about that is, you know, a little bit of it may show through, and if it does, it's going to work with the general color sense of the scene. It's not going to feel completely out of place, whereas if I chose, um, say, a gray or a brown or you know some other color that doesn't really complement the scene, it just wouldn't work quite as well in those areas where, where it'll show through. So that's really the rationale for this color. And to the outside observer, this certainly could look a little bit messy, but that's okay. I just want to get these shapes, these relationships in. So that was a couple minutes. Have some ideas. And I'm going to go ahead, grab a paper towel here. I'm going to go ahead and jump right in with some dark values. So my trusty Ludwig Violet eggplant. And this is quite dark, however, it will work, I believe, because I'm not laying it in full pressure. And when I wet it, I'm getting all of that tooth back, so I can, and I will, layer over it quite a lot. Different tree trunks, things happening in here that are nice. Just sort of start to indicate a little bit of that. Maybe put a little bit of it over here. Looking for basically for sh the big shapes. pull some of that nice cool blue color in here and there are these nice trees back here that I do want to indicate but at least I don't want to completely obscure that hill
Now I'm looking for you know, a little bit of a green. I do see a fair bit of this kind of cool green sitting in a lot of this foliage here. So I'm going to do some layering, say a bit of this cool. Just finding a nice warmer tone. Not quite what I want. Actually, I'm gonna use a little bit darker green. This green here is a, a Giro, which is a nice sort of warm, darker green where kind of like that that eggplant terry ludwig eggplant if i use it thinly it'll go down but it's not going to become you know overwhelming it's not going to fill a tooth on me for a little bit of color to start scumbling in back here. A little cool green down here. put in, kind of indicate where this nice hill goes back there. Okay, so I'm going to start putting in a bit of color up in the sky. Just looking for a nice, cool, neutral violet for the bottoms of those clouds. See how this works. indicate where this will go and a little bit here there's a nice warm pink that I can actually start to scumble in so we can get a bit of an interaction between that violet and that pink those areas but it's not really much of a value shift it's really a color temperature and a color hue shift and I will indicate where some of this color is going that's definitely intense Put a little bit of where this nice yellow will be. 
come in with some of my blue color now, some of the sky, some of that sky color. Definitely that feels intense, meaning it's saturated so I can come in with something a little bit more neutral. Kind of just tone it down a little bit. Start to lighten it up as we're getting both towards the horizon, but also towards the sun, the source of light, which is over here. This even comes in over here. What's nice is where, one second, say back here, that far distant area where it's going to be the lightest, there's a really nice yellow back there. So I put in that sky color to start and then a little bit of yellow in there. I am going to bring in a little bit more color and value, a little darker value in some of this ground plane. I think the jump from the darks to the, the light side. It's a little bit too abrupt, so just sort of layering in a little bit of a uh, more, um, slightly more saturated and darker green there. I think there's probably enough color to start wetting with alcohol, enough, enough pastels down. So I'm back to this brush because brush I have a little bit more control with it. Again, I'm using my 70% isopropyl alcohol. And when doing um, sort of a, a local color underpainting like this, I do start in my lights, because if I go direct, directly in with my darks, it will kind of muddy my alcohol. So I, I want to avoid that. But where those edges meet, I can actually go ahead and start going in, softening a bit of that. Now if I'm getting too much drippiness, I can clean it up. But I, I feel like the, you know, applying the alcohol, because we're starting to now see some soft edges, really helps, helps it start to read a little bit, even in this underpainting stage, which is, you know, still, Kind of in the playing around stage still trying to kind of figure things out here and if i feel like i'm getting too much alcohol i will wet it with my paper towel and i forgot to mention but this the paper i'm using is uart 400 grit dry mounted to acid-free foam core if you have questions about that, um, you know, we can go ahead and put it in this post and I'll, I'll respond. But that's how I prepare basically all of my pastel painting surface is with, with basically those materials. It's really become my, my go-to.
preferred support. I know I said I'm working light to dark, but where that sky edge meets the tree edge, I don't want to allow the alcohol to completely dry because then I won't be able to soften it. I do want to have, like I've talked about several times, I want to start with soft edges that I can always take some time and harden up later on. If I want some select hard edges, I have that ability to harden them, but I, I don't want to start with too hard and have to worry about softening them up. So that, that's personal preference on my part. All right. dripping all over my hands so I am you know I'm fairly intentional with with this process I do you know value that that underpainting and, and how it can simplify the painting process if I have good information at this point if I come out of an underpainting and you know don't have a lot of useful information to me it almost becomes useless because I have to repaint the whole scene. Whereas if I can at least come out of the underpainting with this, with a good um, you know, base of color, values, uh, it becomes very, very valuable. And what'll happen almost 100% of the time after you wet an underpainting with alcohol is your value range will diminish a bit. Everything's going to darken. It will lighten again once the alcohol dries. But that's just something you have to keep in mind is, is that is going to happen. So don't get you know, too surprised by it or you know, get too overwhelmed. It's just kind of the, the nature of it. Trying to eliminate hard edges as much as possible. Feel this here is a bit hard. So let's try to just soften that up a little bit. Now I was thinking it'd be nice to have some of these as. Um, live demonstrations, that way you could, you know, ask questions while I'm doing the painting. Um, you know, during this dry down period, it would be a nice time to, you know, answer some of those questions. So something I'm, I am thinking about for future um, demonstrations.
All right. So let that be. So when I look at this underpainting, sorry you guys are seeing quite a bit of glare there, but when I, you'll see it better when it dries up a little bit. But when I look at it, I like already what I'm seeing from a composition standpoint, um, this entire ground plane. So basically this shape here is very, very similar in value, just like it is here. And that's the way I want it to be. That should really be subordinate to what's happening here, what's happening here. Um, I do want to show those directional lines. Um, not this one so much, but say this one, this one, this one, here, here, and here. So I will have to be sure there is at least enough value contrast um, that those are, are visible. But, you know, I'm, I'm liking just sort of the general shapes of things, and, and I like how there is a lot of very, very soft, soft edges right now. Almost has a bit of like a kind of a dreamy feel to it. So when I come back in and start applying, um, you know, fresh marks on top of this, I will, as always, start working in dark to light, but I'll probably jump to the sky before I get to those actual values as I'm building up because the sky is really setting the key and it, it's really the star of this painting. So I don't want to, you know, hold off on it until the very end. I do want to start um, developing some of those relationships somewhat early on in the scene. So I, I will work on this guy probably once I have like mid values in, in the ground plane, I'll probably jump up into the sky and, and work on that a little bit. Now it's hard for me to tell if this is dry, but if I look at the camera, I can actually see the... So it looks like there's still some areas where it's a little bit wet. So I now have... I'm going to talk a little bit about um, this underpainting. So, I now have a working palette of about 15-ish colors, um, so which is a really good starting place for this painting. Now I can essentially use those exact same colors, bring them back into the scene, and there will be sort of create this kind of interaction between the underpainting and what's on top because this underpainting will actually stay a little bit darker. So, you know, merely uh, or sort of purely by um, doing this process, I'm getting some depth with the application by having this uh, wetted part sitting underneath um, the fresher marks that will, will soon go on top. Let's see here. Just looking for a nice dark pastel to indicate some of these darker tree trunks. I'm gonna move this one over a little bit. Or blue color. And I 
will use just a touch of that eggplant because I do like that cool, warm interplay. And it will get lightened up, like I've said, considerably with, you know, next values that I will paint with. Connecting, connecting my darks in the scene. I've talked about that a couple times. And I actually want to drop that a little bit, this line here. There's some nice trees back here just start to indicate a little bit So that nice, warm Giro green, pulling that in a little bit here. And by applying this very, very lightly, you know, I'm, I'm getting some soft values up there, even though this is technically a fairly dark pastel. But because I'm not laying it in full value, um, it creates some nice sort of subtlety and nuance in value, depending on how uh, heavy I push on the pastel. That's starting to look, look a little bit interesting. So let's see. I'm trying to think what color. Oh, I use this nice violet here. I'm trying to actually remember what color I used up in the sky. Couldn't remember. working very softly and looking to see where this violet is found in the scene.
And because that's a violet, I'm actually going to come in, talked about a couple times too, using analogous colors. So I'm going to pull in we have a nice blue now, balance out that, that violet effect a little bit. And when you look at these scenes, I mean, you will see those subtleties. That, you know, you just have to know what you're looking for. So this top edge and, you know, in, in some of this interior, there are some of these lighter values. So I'm not, you know, making it up. I am seeing it. It's not really a theory. It's, you know, painting what I'm seeing. Searching for a bit lighter neutral blue. Let's see if this one will work. That's not lighter. Actually, before I do that, let me just see how this works. It's, it's a bit dark. This is a um, a Rocher that I love. It's this nice kind of neutral blue color that I really, really like up in the sky. So I'm gonna hold off on that though. I think it's too dark, too, too dark right now. All right, so this is lighter blue that I talked about which does happen in the clouds down here they do get quite a bit lighter Come in with a little bit warmer violet now. Not a huge change in value, but definitely a shift in color temperature, which will be helpful. Trying to be patient. Not the most patient person, but I'm trying to be patient as I'm building this up. That's too, too pretty. That color is just too pretty. Trying to find a good edge of the pastel. Starting to get some of those value relationships in the sky now.
so now it's really necessary that I come in with some sky color. Ooh, that's green. Because I want to start reshaping some of these clouds using good old negative painting, softening edges, So negative painting, I think, is really the secret weapon of effective sky painting and cloud painting. Because even if, I think I've said this several times, even if a cloud looks like it has a hard edge, it really doesn't. You can create, I mean, there are some styles where clouds do have hard edges. So I'm not saying you can't do it, but for my particular style, um, you know, my clouds tend to be very soft edged, and that's the way that I prefer them. I like them to be very sort of ethereal and have that sort of fluffy, ephemeral um, effect. Ethereal. I don't know if ephemeral is the right word. I will say ethereal. Take a quick step back here, just get a sense of how things are looking from a distance. Okay. I can work on this shape a little bit.
come back in with that mountain color, reestablish that. does get darker over here. Sort of fades. Kind of fades off up there. Okay, so let's spend a little bit more time on the ground. This, I do like this tree over here, it gives sort of a stop. some areas where you know I will lighten that value even more down here but not significantly Just looking for a kind of lighter color that can act as this bit of land here that's getting a little bit of direct light. Coming across there. color a lot. 
that'll work here. to lighten this hill up back here. Quick step back again. All right, so it is starting to, to read a bit. So now I see the painting process is all about finesse and trying to bring this up to a finish. So indicate a little bit of detail, but not much. And although I'm using mostly kind of neutral greens, it's okay to for me to pull in, you know, some more saturated greens. Gives it a little bit more, you know, interest down here. So it's not all all neutrals. Scumble a little violet back in this hill. Maybe a little violet over here. And then subtly indicate that plane shift. Thinking about reestablishing those dark trees back there again. But not in a too obvious fashion, sort of subtly indicate them. And I'm going to come in with some new pastels, which are always kind of my go-to for, you know, cleaning up some edges. I 
Okay, so at this point, really need to be thinking about, you know, what does it need to come up to finish? Definitely need to clean up, you know, quite a bit in the sky. Let me take another step back. Kind of a nice bluish green color to give some variety up in that sky color. This is where really, really need to be thoughtful with some of the mark making. thinking I can lay in the greens of this tree at this point now that I have a feel for things a little bit a little bit stronger giving that contrast because the contrast is really essential Do see some nice warm violets in here. Start to put put a little bit of that in here. Which helps to just break up all of that green.
Okay, so I'm going to spend a bit more time up in the sky and then hopefully I can say, you know, in the next five to seven minutes that this will be done. some nice kind of wispy, barely even perceptible clouds. soften this edge over here. Take another step back. Okay, so I'm liking the sense of light that I'm seeing. still clean up. You know, the shape of this tree is so important to the scene that you know, I don't want to stop unless I'm happy with how that's painted in. a little bit of warmth being cast up into this cloud. Soften that a little bit. That mark was too strong. The pastel was softer than I thought it was going to be. Okay. A little bit of detail, not much. This painting isn't really about detail, it's about light. 
but a little bit of detail, just a touch, can really work well. Continue some of this light through a little bit. some nice Whew. yeah all right I'm gonna be really subtle with this There's really not a whole lot else I feel like I, I need to do right now. Um, maybe just some, you know, some subtle adjustments. Like maybe I can indicate that a little bit better. Just about there. step back of 
value 8. I think it has a nice, nice sense of light. Couple different focal areas. At this point, I'm thinking, what can I do to really, you know, guide the viewer? I talk about this quite a bit. Um, that's going to feel. And I feel like what I can do is, say if I bring couple of marks of those grasses in, pull you up here, maybe I even say for this part of this back hill, even make it a little bit pink, you know, why not? So here, up here, I feel like you want to come into this area, and then there's this over here. So there's a couple different areas of interest, which is exactly what I, I wanted to have. Um, you know, a lot of this over here really just kind of fades off. This is all supportive. Well, when I squint, I think the values are working on the whole. I like the values. I mean, at this point, I'm getting a little bit fussy, but you know, I, I, I do like the effect of the piece, so why not take it, you know, all the ways to a finish rather than stopping short? And as I've said before, if it does get really boring, there's always the option to either fast forward or, you know, you could stop watching at this point and say, okay, I, I you know, there's enough prior to this point. up here that works looking at shapes and this is always an editing process Let's see what happens if I tone this down.
I feel like this mark could be softened a little bit. taking a moment to evaluate. One more step back. I think that's a good place to call it for the day. I could always, always, if I wanted to, you know, revisit it another day. Which might be good at this point. You know, I'm calling it done, but I could very easily come back in a day or two and say, oh, well, you know, that's obvious. I should have done this or that. Um, so. I'm not seeing those things right now, sort of the obvious edits. So let me take the phone off the uh, stand. I'll show the piece straight on. And, and I'll upload an edited photo of it for everybody to look at. I will color correct it because that's pretty far off. So that's the scene. There's the reference. Thank you very much and uh, feel free to put um, any comments or questions um, in the message uh, for this post and I will get to them as soon as I can and I will post that corrected um, photo of the scene. All right, take care, bye.